Everyone feels my coming at you. As I've been diving deeper and deeper into the play to earn space, GameFi space, one of the unique areas that I think I, I had never really thought about until I kind of dive deeper is this concept of, let's say you're actually building a play to earn game and I wanna reward players for, let's even simple on, for completing a daily task. Let's say you complete your mission, you get a token. Simple, right? Very simple. How does that actually work? From a practical standpoint, let's assume that you have something like a PlayFab server that is, available to verify that a user actually completed a task as opposed to just calling the blockchain API. The naive approach would actually just be to have a private key that holds all of the tokens, runs the generate or mint function, and then transfers that token to the user. Problem with that is when you're looking at orders of scale, when we're talking about, say, let's even say a million daily active users in the best case scenario. And let's take a cheap example of, say, the Binance Smart Chain, where it is, say, about 10 cents per transaction on average, right? Just kind of give or take there, just due to gas fees. That means that you're talking about for a daily mission, 1 million players in the best case scenario, 10 cents in the best case scenario, $100,000 per day that you have to spend to leverage the blockchain to reward tokens to players. That's, uh, I, I don't know about you, but it doesn't really sound that profitable or that sustainable as a, a model for dishing out transactions. So in that capacity, we need to look towards a model that kind of distributes that cost to all of the players that would want to have their tokens maintained on chain. An idea that I was told to me over Discord, which is the first time I've heard it, but I think it's been implemented multiple times before, is the concept of Merkle tree. So I want to briefly describe what a Merkle tree is in this video, how it's useful for the concept of pushing gas fees from you as the game developer to the player and what that looks at at a high level. I think ultimately this eventually needs to get abstracted for game developers to more easily do that, which is something that I'm thinking about. But for now, I just wanted to walk through that high level concept. As always, if you have questions, definitely let me know down in the comments below, or you can head over to Discord and chat with the rest of the community. So I'll leave links to both these resources down in the comments, but I think these are probably the best summary blogs that I have seen that really talk about the problem of Merkle trees and how that could correlate to the play to earn slash GameFi space. So let's first kind of explain roughly what a Merkle tree is. And from that, we can then work our way backwards to the problem, which is ultimately enabling a user to interact with a smart contract that we have proven that they completed the game task and are the recipient of our token. So Merkle tree, there's just a quick example of it. It is a binary tree. What a binary tree is, is simply a tree like this structure where all the nodes of that tree will have a minimum of zero to two children nodes. So all the leaf nodes here, will they have no children nodes attached to them because they're at the bottom of the chain. Everything else will have either one or two. And all of that stems into what's called the Merkle root, which is what is shown here in the, the image that you're seeing on screen. The way things are structured in this Merkle tree is such that all of our leaf nodes contain the content that you would want to have proven exists within this tree. What does that mean? Basically, this is in the context of, let's say, this is our game and we want to prove whether or not a player's wallet address is in this structure, then each of these leaf nodes is a representation of someone's wallet address. More specifically, the way that this whole structure works is based on hashing. And so it's actually the exact data that's in this node is a hash of your wallet address. Moving up the chain then, each of these nodes is a hash of the sum or concatenation, if you will, of these two nodes. So A1 plus A2 hashed is what A is. And then the Merkle root here is gonna be the hash of A and B that then will serve as that Merkle root. And that should ideally be a 32-bit uh, string that you can easily move around. Once I have that root, and if I know all of the parent nodes within a given structure, I can basically have a proof representation to prove whether or not any given person's wallet address exists within this structure. So if we look at that 
in the next blog here, they walk you through a really great example of exactly this function. Let's say you have a bunch of addresses you want whitelisted. This is that JavaScript representation of that. You can see how that works as, as in the context of say a Merkle tree structure where you have all of the addresses and the hashes kind of summing up into your Merkle node right here. And then when you actually look at say, moving this to the blockchain, what you can do is given a Merkle node root, which is a small amount of data that would sit on the blockchain, you can write a function such that given the proof, I can validate whether or not the user that is calling this function is a valid user as according to this Merkle root data structure. That's important because now if I can prove is someone whitelisted or not whitelisted, I can then act on that to then validate whether or not they should earn a reward or not earn a reward. And that's an incredibly powerful concept because you can now take that one step back and put that in the context of basically using a whitelist for anyone who has played the game and earned a reward. And all you need to do as the game developer is basically make sure this Merkle root stays correct and updated within the context of that smart contract. Then you provide the Merkle proof to any player that wants to actually go ahead and call this function. And once they call the function, then they as the player will be rewarded the token. And because the player is the one calling that actual function on the blockchain, they're the ones that is responsible for the blockchain reward. This provides the advantage of being able to distribute those gas fees to all your users, while at the same time, while still providing a secure framework for, for actually doing that. The one thing that needs to consider is when you're architecting your game, then let's just say you're going with this whitelist methodology, you just need to decide, okay, how often am I updating this Merkle root so that players can claim their token. You could do this even on a daily basis, right? And say, hey, players, play our game once every 24 hours, we'll go ahead and update the smart contract so that you can go ahead and claim your token. And we'll provide you that proof so that you can actually go ahead, claim the, these tokens. And you've now abstracted things out. And really you as the game developer, you're only going to pay once to update the Merkle root on this smart contract, which is an incredibly powerful mechanism to minimize your gas fees while still enabling your player base to actually go ahead and choose to move things from off chain to on chain. So again, I'll leave both of these links down in the description for anyone to do some further reading. I just thought this is an incredibly powerful concept, something that at least I personally hadn't even thought about until someone had even mentioned it to me and I thought it was worth sharing. So hopefully you found this video helpful and it gives you some insights into how you might consider designing a play to earn game. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, I do think it's one of those things that eventually needs to be abstracted away for the majority of game developers because the less code that a game developer has to write and the more code of this type that sits on the back end within a maintained service, I think the better it'll be for more developers to enter the space and not have to learn a lot of these nuances and complexities that come with all of this cryptography. And I think that's an important piece to, to enabling more, more people to enter the space. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure to leave a like on the video. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. It's been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.